in this section we're reviewing derivatives. On your exam you're going to have basic power rules. You'll have basic trig derivatives so make sure you learn uh, your six, ba six basic trig derivatives. I won't ask you antiderivatives but I will ask you the derivatives. Quotient, chain, qu chain with product and then of course chain with trig. Okay so here's a, a typical one that's a chain with trig. Remember when I worked this in class, I said let's do it with power and trig and angle. So the first thing I want to do when I take this derivative is I want to take care of the power, just the power. So the power is 4. So I'm going to bring down the 4 and decrease this one to 3. Okay, now that just takes care of the power. The second thing I need to do is take care of the trig part. So the trig part is cosine. The d derivative of cosine is negative sine. Keep your angle. So that takes care of the trig part. The last part is angle. The derivative of the angle here would be 2. So if we put all of this together, we have a 4 and a negative and a 2 that can go out front. So 4 times 2 is 8. With the negative would be negative 8. Cosine cubed of 2x plus pi. Sine of 2x plus pi. Here's your answer. The next one you have your basic chain rule. Let's rewrite it first. Remember that a radical changes to a fractional exponent. The first thing I have to do when I take this derivative is I need to bring down the power. So I'm going to bring down that one half. Keep the inside part. Do not change the inside part and you're going to decrease the power by 1. So 1 half minus 1 is a negative 1 half. Don't stop there. Stopping there is one of your multiple choice answers. Do not fall for that trick. Remember that you have to do the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside would be 24x. That's the major problem. Don't forget the derivative of the inside. Now, you can't do anything with the 12x squared minus 5 as far as simplifying yet, but the 1 half and the 24 will simplify. 1 half of 24 would make that a 12x. 1 half of 24 is 12. The 12x 12 squared minus 5 goes on the bottom, and it would be, be a 1 half positive exponent there. Okay, now that's how it looks. I didn't write mine with a radical at the end, but you certainly could have, and that's how they did it in the multiple choice lineup. So here's what our problem would have looked like. Remember, a one-half exponent is the same thing as a square root. Here is my answer. Okay, on this one, we have the quotient rule. Now, You'll notice that the bottom two multiple choice possibilities are very similar. They only differ by a sign. So be careful that you're paying attention that you don't pick the wrong one with the wrong sign. And also be careful um, that you don't set up the quotient rule backwards because that will give you the wrong sign. So you're going to say low low d high minus high d low over low squared. Low d high minus high d low over low squared. Okay, so let's clean this up. We get a 20x squared plus 8 
Now be careful, you have a 10x that you're multiplying through and a negative. So this is going to be a negative 40x squared plus 70x. Now I did my 10 and the sign at the same time, but we would have negative 4 times 10 would be a negative 40, and two negatives would be a positive 7 times 10, um, and that would be a positive 70. Okay, when we clean it up, 20 minus 40 is a negative 20x squared plus 70 plus 8 over 5x squared plus 2 squared. Here's my answer.